Good afternoon, and welcome to the February episode of Art with the Armory. I'm Ann Hales, Outreach Director with AARP Alabama and Central and Central Alabama. Hi, I'm Danae Morgan. I'm the Executive Director of the Arts Council of Montgomery and the Director of the Armory Learning Arts Center. Danae, this Art with the Armory show that we do is always a highlight of my month. We do it every month and we generally show the talented artists of the Armory who help us make our own creations. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. And this was your idea. We're showcasing African-American art and artists in Montgomery in a documentary that was created for the Arts Council of Montgomery and sponsored by AARP Alabama. Uh, tell us, how did, how, you, how did you come up with that idea? Well, <laughs> it's kind of funny how it came together. Um, we have been programming with AARP for a couple of years now. And non-pandemic, we have um, patrons come into the Armory and do uh, classes and workshops in person. And so when we were looking at our 2021 programming with pandemic here, we knew that we would need to do virtual content. And so we were um, scheduling out the entire year for 2021. And we do a lot of little arts and crafts projects throughout the year. And with February being Black History Month, I knew that I wanted to do some type of project to incorporate Black history, but also have an arts component. That was really important to me. And so I just got to thinking about um, there's just been an explosion of public art, particularly murals here in Montgomery. And a couple years ago, um, I've told this story before, but a couple years ago, I took my son. We usually go out of town for a little spring break vacation, and we decided just to stay in town and do a staycation. And so we went around to the local, um, he was studying Alabama history and black history. And so we went around to the local tourist spots, the Rosa Parks Museum. We also checked out a lot of the public art. Um, and so I just got to thinking, wouldn't it be really cool if we did uh, a field trip for people? Um, a lot of people don't aren't familiar with all of the public art offerings that we have in Montgomery. And so let's mm -hmm. just try to do some kind of virtual field trip. And so I got to thinking about, you know, who would be best at that? We have a list of teachers and instructors that we pull from and who could really pull this off in a good way. And, and that's Bill. So we're going to introduce Bill in a few minutes. And that's perfect segue into this part. I'm really glad that you came up with that for this, for this series that we do. I learned an amazing amount from this video. And I know that our audience will too. Like, did you know that one of the most important artists of the 20th century in this country is from Montgomery, Alabama? But what's even more amazing is he didn't pick up a pencil or a brush until he was in his late 80s. And he's still, he's, he's now very famous. And you'll learn more about him and so many other things within this video. Um, in this documentary. Now I'd like to bring on Bill Ford so that he can tell us a little bit more. Um, Bill, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. Bill wrote and created this documentary that you're about to see. It was, it was filmed by videographer Jamal Allen of the Alabama State University. Bill is a lifelong resident of Montgomery and a talented artist like your dad right before you. Correct. He's also president of the board of directors for the Arts Council of Montgomery. He worked for many years and, and you can correct me on any of this if I've got any of it wrong, but I know you worked for many years with Jamal at WSFA. So it, it's great to have you here. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. You know, I mentioned to you earlier today and, and even before that I have really learned a lot in this video and or in this documentary and i've lived here for 40 years or just about 40 years and and it I've, i'm always learning something about montgomery and i really learned a lot here the title you gave it awakening the african-american experience in montgomery is appropriate it was it was an awakening for me um what do you hope that what do you hope that the audience who's watching now will come away with after seeing this video 
Well, exactly what you came away with. If if the audience, if I'm able to expose the audience to some things about Montgomery that they didn't know, that then uh, I, th I think I would have been effective. I, I got a good buddy of mine who's from New York City. And the first time I went to New York with him, he was taking me around town and I was pointing out landmarks in New York to him that he had never seen before. Because often when you're in a city, you, you just don't, you just you're not aware of the things that are going on right there in your own city because you take them for granted. So I, I was I was uh, he, he he laughed. We passed by CBGB's, the old punk club. And I told him that's CBGB's. And he's like, what is that? So, you know, just just stuff that's going on in Montgomery that uh, and 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 things uh, artists in Montgomery. Montgomery has a rich history in the arts. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of it is uh, kind of obscure. So I wanted to make sure that I, I put things, the, the, the murals and the artwork in its historical context in the city. And that was important to me. So if everybody can pick up something that they didn't know before seeing this, then I think my job would have been done. Great. Well, let's get to that documentary then. We want to show it because I know we have a lot of people online who, who want to see it. Um, and folks, as you're watching, please stick around afterward. Ask, um, ask your questions during the documentary if you'd like to in the comments. We'll get to those at the end. You can ask more at the end. Put those in the chat. And we'll, um, at the end, we'll also mention some of the other events that we have coming up on AARP Alabama Facebook and YouTube and um, Teletown Halls. So if you have to leave uh, or if you have any Internet question, I mean, Internet connectivity issues, you have to leave for any reason. Um, you can always come back to our AARP Alabama Facebook page or YouTube channel to watch it again. And we have lots of other things. We have our monthly Art with the Armory um, videos that are on there and you can go see how to make all kinds of beautiful things. So uh, let's get on and show this video, shall we? Some of the earliest footsteps taken by artists of color in their quest to gain recognition were taken here on Monroe Street in downtown Montgomery. This was the center of enterprise and expression in Browntown, the hub of black commerce, culture, and entertainment in the late 19th century into the middle of the 20th century. In 1939, Bill Trailer, a former slave turned sharecropper after the emancipation from Lowndes County, Alabama, moved to Montgomery. Only after the age of 85 did he launch his untrained, whimsical drawings in front of the storefronts and alleyways along Monroe Street. Due to the interest and promotion of local artist Charles Shannon in 1941, trailer had his first exhibition and modest public attention. Delicious irony that a man, homeless, who often slept in the back room in a funeral home, has now found a home on the walls of the city's ultimate temple of art. Charles Shannon actually gave the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts a collection of Bill Trailer's work in 1983 and the museum now has the largest collection of Bill Trailer's work in any public collection. It's astounding, really, when you think about it, that this man who, who was sitting on the streets of Montgomery in the 1930s, his work is now hanging in a museum with the work of people like um, Thomas Hart Benton and Mary Cassatt and Edward Hopper, all the greats of American art history and he's right here among them. However, it would take another 30 years after his death before he gained widespread recognition and acceptance in the art world. Today, he has been given a central and foundational position in the genres of self-taught and modern art. 
1867, the State Normal College for Negroes was founded. In 1887, it moved to Montgomery and eventually became known as Alabama State College. Even as Bill Trailer was walking the path as a primitive self-taught artist, Alabama State was formally training artists of color in classical art theory and practices in drawing, painting, ceramics, and sculpture. In 1947, the ceramics department was led by pioneering ceramicist and sculptor Isaac Scott Hathaway. Following stints at Tuskegee Institute and interestingly, the Alabama Polytechnic Institute, now known as Auburn University, Hathaway arrived at ASC with a stellar reputation in the classical style of sculpture. He was the first African American to design a U.S. coin, the first of BTUW in 1946, and the second of George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington in 1951. Not only did Alabama State students receive the excellent tutelage of Hathaway, but the faculty eventually boasted the addition of the fiercely innovative, legendary, and accomplished Haywood L. Oubre. A New Orleans native, Oubre was the first art major at Dillard University. After his graduation in 1939, he continued his studies at Atlanta University. In 1941, he spent time at Tuskegee as well, but was drafted into the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers during World War II. Oubre was renowned for his innovative wire hanger sculptures that he developed in his time at Alabama State. This was arguably the golden age of art at the HBCU, and it graduated many outstanding students like Floyd Coleman, Arthur L. Britt, John Fagan, William Henderson, Samuel O. Williams, and many others, including my father. These graduates are testament to the exemplary standards set by these extraordinary artist educators. Known worldwide for being the church from which Martin Luther King Jr. led the Montgomery bus boycott, launching the modern civil rights movement, Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church has a rich history that precedes the tenure of MLK. Established in 1877, it has long been a source for social change and educational advancement for people of color in Montgomery and Central Alabama. In 1980, church member, artists, and Alabama State College grad John Fagan oversaw the creation of a sprawling basement mural that would chronicle the seminal incidents in the career of former Pastor King. From Montgomery to Memphis, with the assistance of Carl McMullen, later known as Fisho, who was himself an alumnus of Alabama State and a former student of both my father and Fagan, the mural was the first of its kind in the city and has become a must-see for tourists and history buffs who visit the historic church, which was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1974 for its role in the Civil Rights Movement and additionally to the National Register of Historic Places in 1982. This church has welcomed over 20,000 visitors from around the world to come to see this very historic place. Here in the basement of the church is a masterpiece of art done by the principal artist, Mr. John Fagan. In 1995, the director of the Montgomery City Department of Human Resources, Terry Benton, commissioned 12 George Washington Carver High School students to paint a mural on a bare wall in the department building. Led by their art instructor, an ASU grad, Muriel Peck, eventually it was decided that four panels would be affixed to the wall. But upon completion, there was some opposition from some staff members, so the panels ended up in the basement. There they languished, 
gathering dust before being given to the Rufus Lewis Library on Mobile Highway. And in 2015, some 20 years after their creation, a structure was erected and they were unveiled in time for the 50th anniversary of the historic Selma to Montgomery March. Two years later, the north side of the structure became the home of work that commemorates the 60th anniversary of the Montgomery bus boycott and the appearance during the 50th anniversary of the Selma to Montgomery March, the reenactment of which was attended and led by the first POTUS of color, Barack Hussein Obama. The mural illustrates how a struggle that began by the black citizens of Montgomery, who walked for more than a year to protest segregation and bigotry, eventually sparked a movement that led to the Voting Rights Act. It secured the right to vote for disenfranchised citizens of color across the nation and led to the election of a man of color to the highest office in the country. For the 200th birthday of the city of Montgomery, then director of the Montgomery Library System, Juanita Oz, commissioned me to visually document the history of Alabama's capital city. Since individuals and events in Montgomery quite often have an impact on a national scale, I selected a cross-section of individuals with the determination to include people of color within the city's historical context that are often overlooked. Depicted here are Bill Trailer, Big Mama Thornton, the originator of You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog, an inspiration to Janis Joplin, as well as Oscar Gamble, Mose T, original temptation Melvin Franklin from the past, as well as present natives of prominence like Oscar-winning actress Octavia Spencer, DJ Twitch from the Ellen DeGeneres Show, and rap sensation Chica Oranika. I can still recall the first time I ever came into this building. My dad, being an artist, wanted to expose his son to his first visit to a museum. Even today, I can recall the open looks of hostility we received. So that makes it especially poignant and meaningful to me that my work is now being exhibited on these very walls, something that my father and I could not have envisioned back in 1967. The death of a supplicated black man, George Floyd, sparked outrage and galvanized reaction throughout the world in the summer of 2020. Marches and demonstrations took place, and artists of color also took to the streets to register their nonviolent resistance and outrage. Montgomery, the birthplace of community activism and civil rights, was no exception. Two very visual and powerful statements were expressed in downtown Montgomery. Historic Court Square, a longtime hub for movement in the downtown area, is where the Winter Building still sits. It was from this structure in 1861 that a telegram ordering the bombardment of Fort Sumter was sent, starting the Civil War. The square was also the site for one of the largest open-air slave markets in the nation. These enduring symbols of a dark past have been forced to share space with two brighter indicators of the evolution and irrepressible elements of the human spirit. Local business owner and artist Michelle Browder was the impetus behind the creation and location of the Black Lives Matter mural that rings the historic family. Though the mural is temporary, some seven months after its debut, it still marks an incredible sea change, an emphatic historic rebuke 
to the place where human beings will sold like cattle into a life of bondage and cruelty. The square is also home to a monument of long overdue recognition for the inimitable Rosa Parks. Her quiet dignity was her calling card, and sculptor Claudetta Fulmer, though not an artist of color, ably captures the serenity and grace that was so emblematic in the iconic Mrs. Parks. The life-sized, ground-level, solemn, simple figure is no less powerful as it stands like a sentinel and witness to historic events. No more than a stone's throw away is Milton Madison's Are You Listening? 21 Dreams Arts and Culture, led by Kalonji Gilchrist, commissioned the Birmingham native and graduate of ASU's storied art department to reflect the duality of the chaos that decimated black Americans in 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic and the all too often fatal encounters with law enforcement officers, both disproportionately affecting people of color. A plaintive masked figure in the center is flanked by the names of two men of color who did not survive encounters decades apart with local law enforcement under a cloud of suspicion and unanswered questions. Montgomery's west side is where a budding rose is literally growing from the concrete, fulfilling the words of the late poet and rapper Tupac Amaru Shakur. The brainchild and heart's blood of artist and community activist Kevin King is King's Canvas, a studio and gallery that is creating social change and community development in an area that has not seen much in either category in decades. People who live in this neighborhood, I found out, are very proud people. They love living here, but once you bring art into the community, and people are able to engage in the art, I just saw it do something different. I saw people have uh, a, a, a better sense of pride, understanding that progression is actually happening in that community instead of it continuing to decline uh, as it's been doing for a while. What we are currently seeing at the location is just the beginning. Plans are underway to expand the footprint to include an outdoor performing arts area as well as expanded studio gallery space and a retail shop. The side of the building is also the home to a mural painted by the current chair of ASU's art department, Nathaniel Allen, who together with the assistance of Winfred Hawkins, a local artist and graduate of the Savannah College of Art and Design, created Welcome to the West Side. Kevin was talking about this mural and you know I'm kind of interested in the background like you know just overhearing uh, what he was saying and then uh, eventually we we started just talking about it uh, and and so I was like okay well you know hey I'm gonna go home and just put together something I uh, drew up a little mock-up uh, we, we took some pictures of the, of the building and then I uh, imposed them you know uh, you, you know Photoshop Illustrator on the building and I showed it to him and uh, you know um, he was really pleased with it, and so well, we just decided to start moving forward, uh, moving forward with it. Nathaniel has really good craftsmanship, so you know you're doing letters, <laughs> you know, giant letters on the side of a building, so you you need to make sure that they're as nice as possible. So um, that's that's how I got um, Nathaniel to help me help me do it. One of the country's first African American musical icons to transcend the Chitlin circuit in vaudeville is the incomparable. Nat King Cole, the first artist of color to host a national television program, Cole started out as a jazz pianist, but eventually found his silky smooth baritone to be his calling card. Born in Montgomery, the lack of a tribute to one of her most illustrious natives was a long egregious oversight. It was finally rectified in the fall of 2019, and this collaborative work by Jerry Gentman, Sonny Polk, and Corey Spearman 
illustrates the non-pareil career and legacy of this groundbreaking artist and performer. I hope this is just the beginning, as there are few performers who have blazed the trail as bright as the one left by this nature boy. Titled Unforgettable after one of his most enduring hits, this mural is interactive and visually arresting. It is hardly a surprise that our steps lead us once again to the campus of Alabama State College, now known as Alabama State University. 2020 saw the opening of the Interpretive Center at ASU, the third and final site marking the route of the historic 54-mile Selma to Montgomery March in 1965. It houses a gallery that will exhibit the works of both local artists as well as those from around the country. Run in collaboration with the National Park Service and the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture at ASU, it joins the Isaac Hathaway Gallery in the Fine Arts Building and the William Colvin and John Fagan Gallery in the National Center Annex and it will ensure that the university will remain vital and in the vanguard for seeing and experiencing art created by persons of color. With the election of the first mayor of color in the city's 200 year history and his subsequent appointments, there will likely be a renaissance that could see the contributions of artists of color reach heights scarcely dreamed of just a short time ago. I welcome this awakening with open arms, confident that we are all up to the task, as it will surely make this city and its environs a more beautiful place, appreciative of the contributions made by all her citizens, unmindful of race, creed, <clears throat> color, ethnicity, or sexual identity according to the tenets of our Creator. Our future is bright. Let's live it. Okay. That was just beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, beautiful. Extreme, we're extremely proud of the documentary. I think from that you can tell that Bill Ford was the only choice, the most logical choice mm -hmm. to do that. Um, he is an artist in his own right. He does a lot of historical um, work and um, he brings a really unique perspective to this project. Um, but he's also a very colorful and wonderful storyteller. Yeah, I, I, I just loved it, Bill. It, 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 tell me, it, was there, I know we were limited with time and, and of what could be incorporated in this. And so people can, you know, we're doing this now so people can stay at home and see this. Um, and, and when they feel comfortable, you know, they can go out. But what are some other things that we could not include in this that you might want to touch on a little bit because you know okay. there's, a venue, the there's also a venue on the west side of montgomery uh in the old union bank building uh a young man started a a a, 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 a concern similar to king's canvas and I, I confess that i don't know the name of it but uh but i find that there's kind of been like i said that's why i thought the title awakening was so appropriate because there seems to be a renewed interest and uh, vigor, uh, enthusiasm uh, for for artists, of, not just artists of colors, but but artists across the across the spectrum, and a lot of it has to do with um, 
You know, the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts under the new director, Angie Dodson, who, who I, I just love. Uh, Angie is, is, is uh, a person who has reached out to, uh, to artists in Montgomery in a way that we probably haven't seen before. Um, and uh, with, with that and, and the continued work of the Arts Council and the Armory, uh, you know, we're, we're just seeing uh, a, a, a revitalization and awakening. And uh, I'm excited. I, I think uh, if not for the pandemic, I think we'd already be in the midst of an explosion, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, naturally, the, the pandemic has sort of taken the steam out of a lot of endeavors. But I, right before it started, uh, one of the last events I attended was the opening of the Interpretive Center at ASU, as well as uh, an event out at the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts in the, in the spectacular sculpture garden that uh, uh, had a lot of the young artists like Lynthia Edwards and, and Kevin King and Winfred Hawkins and other artists mm -hmm. uh, coming together and, and, and it was kind of a mixer. And uh, so all those things were, were in the works. And uh, I think as soon as we all get back, uh, you know, vaccinated and that uh, we'll, we'll be able to go out and and, and really rub elbows and get to to experience this art firsthand is you know art is very tactile it's important that you that you're able to to uh, to see it and, and experience it firsthand and so uh, all of these sites uh, as Janae pointed out earlier they're 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 free and you can anybody can go out and see them that's the great thing about public art is there for yeah. the public experience so uh, I'm, I'm excited. And I think it's going to make Montgomery a uh, eminently more livable place, an enjoyable yeah. place. Well, yeah. you know, and the city is doing so much with um, de uh, development with, in planning uh, new development downtown and in uh, different parts of the city. So I'm sure that additional art will come on board, too. So we'll see. We'll continue to see more and more. Of this, we we did have a question. D Danae, did you want to say something? No, I was just I, I mean, going to to add into what Bill said that the arts um, and culture has been gaining momentum for several years, and uh, we may have been slowed down with the pandemic, but we are being very creative, thinking outside of the box, trying to figure out how to promote the arts and local artists here in Montgomery. Um, and it's just going to continue to grow. The city is doing an excellent job with that. Um, and like Bill said, you know, um, with the addition of new key people and places like Angie at the museum, I think some of the barriers that we've had before, um, whether they're class or cultural, some of those are being broken down. And mm -hmm. that's a lot of what public art does. You may be looking at a mural or some public art and you're around people that you may not normally be around. And it, create, it opens up the dialogue in a way to discuss um, things and see a commonality there. So it's it's a win-win. It brings oh, people together. It really I, does. I want to be sure and mention also that uh, our new cultural arts director, uh, Yvette Jones Smedley, who I've known since she was a wee lass back in junior high school <laughs> at St. Jude, she's a fellow St. Judeite like myself. Uh, and she's, she's an actress and a wonderful advocate for the work, uh, for, the, for art. Uh, and uh, she'll, she'll do a fantastic job. And uh, so our, our future is very bright, very yeah. bright when it comes to the arts. We did have a couple of questions. Uh, and one, uh, Kathy said it's so important. Kathy Wright said, this is so important for our young people to see, learn and experience. How can we make um, this possible for them. Danae, is that something you can answer now? Um, um, yes. Yeah. In fact, we love Kathy. No one love Kathy. She's mm -hmm. one of our members and an arts advocate in the city. And um, in fact, we are working on developing a curriculum to expand or to piggyback on this documentary. Um, we're in the works with Trenum right now to um, do some programming for them for the summer. And we hope to incorporate this film as a part of that. But then I think um, 
this could open so many doors. I think tourism, mm -hmm. you know, should definitely use this video to promote Montgomery in general and the arts. But also, I'd love to see us develop some type of curriculum to go along with this to put into the Montgomery Public Schools. Um, and it could be, I know they're going virtual now. And so that is definitely doable, something that we can work on. Well, and Kathy also said that she considers all of the individuals mentioned and profiled um, involved in this to be heroes of art education for our students. And there was also, mm -hmm. oh, this was one I thought was very, it's just uh, on our YouTube channel. Um, Peggy said the video was very enlightening. So much I wasn't aware of, but I'm not so proud of. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that that a lot of people probably feel that too and, and get that feeling as they're watching this. Um, there were some other. Oh, Kevin. Kevin's watching. Kevin King, you mentioned in the video and he said it, that the, the place that you had ah, mentioned Kevin. is the Urban Dream Fine Arts Thanks, Center Kevin. led Thanks, by Kevin. Anthony Thomas. <laughs> yeah. That's Kevin. You know, you know, I'm old now, so the gray matter is not firing. The synapses don't fire like they used to. <laughs> Urban Dreams, and, and it's right around the corner from me. So thanks, Kevin. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, Susan Still says she's looking forward to a live visit when she can and for her ex her grandchildren to experience this. I think yes, you've right. opened the eyes, um, uh, Bill, and I'm, I thank you for your idea, Danae. Um, sure. that I, I think you've opened the eyes for a lot of people so that we know we can put this on our to-do list. It's, it may be a while before I go out and do a lot of, of public events, but uh, I'm going to put it on my to-do list for when it's safe to go out yeah, and, I, and new places. Yeah, for sure. And uh, my hope is that Montgomery becomes an arts destination. Yes. Uh, yes. There are a lot of towns that are tagged as arts destinations. And I think we can compete with that. Um, we're definitely a civil Absolutely. rights destination. Absolutely. Yeah, and tourism has picked up so much here. Um, but we can weave arts into that and become an arts destination as well. I know when I go to different cities, I'm on TripAdvisor looking up things to do, and art is one of the components that I'm always looking for. Is there anything, so people who are watching, and, and we have people from all over the country watching this time, but it, as people are are from here are looking at this, what can they do to help that movement? How, what, it, what can they do to help the art movement in Montgomery? Or support well, that. One thing they can do. One thing they can do is advocate with their city councilmen and the city officials to to do things that will promote the arts. You know, the thing about Montgomery, Montgomery has a history that is second to none. There, there's there's no other place that has a history that Montgomery does. I mean, from us having the first electric streetcars in the country to having the first commercial. Air, air, uh, air, air school. The Wright brothers opened their first flying school right here in Montgomery. You know, there, there's just so many firsts, so many things here. And then, you know, I, I have to admit that uh, part of this whole process was was extolling the virtues of my alma mater, Alabama State, because my dad went there, and I grew up listening to him talk about Ubre and Hathaway, and when. When he talked about him, it was almost like he wanted to get down on his knees and genuflect, you know. So our history, a combination of our history and our culture, our diverse culture that we've got in 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 Montgomery, and it's been rich all the time. And now that you bring in uh, uh, the Hyundai plant and you have Korean Americans coming in, we've got a, a, a melange of cultures and a mishmash that we could I hate to say it, but people, other people exploit that. We don't exploit it enough. I lived in Jackson, Mississippi for a couple of years. When And Jackson is about the same size as Montgomery. It's the capital city. But the city of Jackson, it, 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 it extols and highlights the virtues of the music, the, the, the blues, Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the, and the visual arts, the dance, the theater, the things, and we got all that. I mean, uh, uh, Danae, uh, I know you've gone to several of the Governor's Arts Awards, 
that they have every couple of years at the uh, at the Alabama uh, Shakespeare Festival. It's done by the State Council on the Arts, and uh, Yvette usually produced those, and it was just highlighting the things, the culture in the state of Alabama. I mean, yeah. from Una Old Oldman who who produced all of the uh, a lot of the hits for the Rolling Stones and and Aretha Franklin and Muscle Shoals and Eddie Floyd and you know we just we just don't we don't pat ourselves on the back enough. Yeah. We don't I, yeah. hear it out enough, and uh, we, right. need, we need to start blowing our own horn. That's so, right. I agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Bill. I would say definitely support your local artists and your arts organizations. Pandemic has many of them and us struggling. Um, we need to showcase the arts more. We Thank haven't you. done as good of a job of that as probably we could have. Um, there's a lot here that people don't know about. And it's things like this that are, um, you know, getting the attention of people. And it's this is a nice time to do it because I feel like people have slowed down some. They have more time to soak things in. And so um, just to showcase the arts, I think, is really important. Absolutely. Well, and people remember that you can share this. We've got a couple other comments I want to show, but you can share this video with with friends and family. You can uh, like our page, uh, follow the AARP Alabama Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Also, the um, the uh, arts um, arts council page and the Facebook page of the Armory. Right. Both yeah. those pages. Mm -hmm. So and you can see the upcoming events that way. So if you follow the pages, you, you'll get notified of events that are coming up. And we do we all do live events all the time. So um, follow those pages and, and share these things. Uh, put their name in the comment, tag them in the comments and it and it will share to them so that they can see it and know that it's on. Um, we did have uh, another comment from Sharon Whitlock, who said she threw this was thoroughly enjoyable. Other than the George Floyd display shown, are there other ways that the Black Lives Matter movement or events of 2020 have influenced the artistic direction? Oh, yeah, by all means. I mean, artists artists tend to, uh, uh, you know, I, I remember years ago I was watching uh, Jacob Lawrence on the Today Show being interviewed by Brian Gumble, And Brian Gumble asked him a question. He said, are you an artist or are you a storyteller? And uh, Jacob Lawrence said it's the same thing. There's one and the same thing. Artists, we, we constantly reflect current events and things that are going on, like when Picasso did Guernica, you know, it was about Spanish Civil War. So artists across the city have created works that, that uh, touch on uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, the Black Lives Matter mural downtown and the, and the uh, uh, Milton Madison mural are just the on the public displays, but artists are constantly creating things that reflect that. I saw several pieces of Kevin's King's Canvas that that were uh, about social change and 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 creating a, a dialogue because that's what art should do. Art should uh, should 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 spark a question or, or uh, you know make you want to explore a subject deeper. So uh, that's that's something that artists do even. Even in in times that are not quite so so uh, tenuous and conflicting as what we're experiencing now, so uh, it, it's no different. This is this is something that uh, artists are constantly doing. Um, yeah. So good. And then we had another, and I agree with that. Um, um, and I've seen Kevin's work too, so that it's really it, I, I agree with all of what you're saying. Um, Margaret Lynn Osfeld said it is great presentation. Many thanks for sponsoring this program to ARP and thank you, Danae, for your support and involvement. And of course, way to go, Bill and Jamal. Yes. And, and Margaret. Margaret is one of the people I absolutely And Margaret, love. yeah. And being from Montgomery, I've known her since we were in high school again. So it's it's particularly gratifying to see that so many of us who are from this city are staying here. And and uh, some of us left, some of us left and came back, and some of us have have been here all the time. But it's really great to see that we understand that for this city to be all it can be, it's going to take us, the people who are from here and who love this place, to see that we put our best foot forward. And Margaret is one of those people. Great, I, and that's a great way to end this. I think 
um, it, it's going to take all of us and, and everyone to work together and to bring this art to the forefront um, and continue to do that, I mean. So thank you again for Danae for coming up with this idea and to the Arts Council for for actually making this video and Bill for creating it, putting it all together with Jamal. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Thank you everyone for coming tonight. <laughs> Today. Bye. Okay. Bye bye.